everybody. I'm Dr. Robert Pierce, an Australian family doctor, and I'm here to talk to you about Alzheimer's disease, which is a very frightening disease and which is set to become a huge epidemic as the population gets older. But I have some news for you. I do not think this disease is caused by ageing. I think it is caused by a specific item of diet that's commonly consumed, and that is refined polyunsaturated vegetable oils. I'll tell you how I worked this out. In 1990 I became curious about what caused this disease and I lived near a medical library and I got some very good clues very quickly in the medical library. In particular there was a study of identical twins in 1955 in Scotland that showed one twin had died of Alzheimer's. It was shown in her brain at post-mortem and her six years later her identical twin sister was very sharp-witted and obviously not getting the disease. I deduced from this vital observation, this very strong clue, that there was probably something to do with the diet or a toxic exposure or a virus, but not ageing, because they were both the same age when the, the affected twin died. My next clue from the medical library was a study showing that perhaps there was much less or maybe no Alzheimer's disease in West Africa. Uh, this is high, highly relevant because they happen to, happen to use more natural oils there, like palm oil. I was becoming interested in oils. So uh, then I discovered a study, a most important study, as not known to Alzheimer researchers, from Nebraska in America in 1976. There was a very good study on safflower oil given to rats, which impaired their memory when the rats, when the new lot of rats were given the same oil in their diet but also vitamin E, there was no problem running through the maze. We can, we can conclude there could be a serious issue with a polyunsaturated vegetable oil from this observation and I subsequently scoured through the nutrition books at the library uh, and discovered that refined vegetable oils, so steam deodorised polyunsaturated seed oils, uh, about one third depleted of vitamin E oxidant, antioxidant during the refining. And this is a vital observation because I was studying essential fatty acids or polyunsaturated fatty acids, that's omega-3 like in fish, omega-6 as in vegetable oils and olive oil and nuts and avocado. And in the brain, my research showed quite quickly that these are very rich, uh, richly concentrated in the brain and in the retina. And these fatty acids in the brain and retina are much longer than usual than, in the, than the rest of the body and very concentrated and very, very likely to oxidise in the nerve cell membrane or in the retina if there is not enough vitamin E in the membrane to protect them against oxygen. So I went from this to ask my patients in general practice, do you use vegetable oil? Do you cook with it? Do you buy Chinese takeaway? Uh, do you have salad dressings, mayonnaise, supermarket dips? oily cakes and I soon discovered that people exposed to these common refined oils had a typical problem of subjective memory loss which they didn't tell anybody else about except me when I asked. They were sensitive to bright light, quite sensitive to a bright light in their eyes and frequently carried sunglasses even on grey days and were, had trouble seeing in the dark. I call this seed oil syndrome and I proceeded to observe that people in their 40s or 50s who'd been using vegetable oil for quite a few years had rather worse memory. It was an ominous discovery. I thought this could lead to Alzheimer's quite clearly, although it's incredibly slow to happen, perhaps not until you're well into your 60s or into your 70s, indeed in your late 70s is the highest risk. So it's very, very slow and perhaps there's plenty of time to prevent this if we avoid these oils and use just olive oil and that's the end of the problem. Uh, the next issue is uh, how do we find how this happens? How, does, how, do, how do these oils cause the problem in the brain? How, what's the connection with Alzheimer's disease? This is probably through the oxidation of nerve cell membranes. It has a special name called lipid peroxidation. This is now known, only recently discovered in Japan, to stop uh, to some degree the clearance, the clearing away of the toxic protein called beta amyloid. Uh, and so it builds up in the brain. And uh, this is very, very slow. And we can detect this beta amyloid in special brain images, brain scans, uh, in people perhaps in their 50s or perhaps the late 40s, the first they see signs of it. So it's remarkably slow to, to build up. And uh, so uh, the next step is to do something about this disease. And we have the opportunity here of uh, uh, persuading the government to pass laws that all 
refined seed oils must have their vitamin E level checked and corrected before they're sold and distributed. This will stop Alzheimer's and incidentally it will also stop something else. In pregnancy it will stop the child being born with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. I did some research on that as well. But we'll leave that out now. So the next step is if we have someone who's been exposed to these oils for many years and they're, say, 55 and worried about their memory and sensitive to bright light and don't see well in the dark, what do we do with these people? So I would advise them, as I do in my practice, you must convert, of course, to olive oil. No more exposure to vegetable oil. And on, the bright, on a brighter note, something positively that can be done uh, is to have plenty of nuts and grains and cereals and orange juice because there is a sugar in those foods called inositol which has been shown to be active against Alzheimer's disease first used in 1996 in Israel just as an empirical trial without expecting anything special but within a month the Alzheimer patients had better language and orientation it was something it was certainly promising uh, ten, uh, four years later in the year 2000 a Canadian scientist discovered that inositol could bind and neutralise the toxic soluble peptides in the brain fluids and remarkable possibilities with that which haven't been properly pursued in Canada they use the wrong form of inositol basically and had problems with it so the ordinary natural inositol in seeds and grains and orange juice and which we also make a small amount of in our own body that's the one which could stop this epidemic in my opinion uh, perhaps in supplement form like 5 or 10 grams a day it is available so that is the, uh, that's the outline of the case that I'm making as a general practitioner who has uh, entered the field of medical research as an interested observer, uh, but with rather more of an open mind and I think rather more curiosity than professional researchers who get stuck on a protein and never look at the diet at all, uh, who just basically lack imagination. And in science, you won't get anywhere without imagination uh, and also persistence. So uh, I hope this is the answer to this problem. And uh, I am uh, quite certain that the details of my work will back up what I'm saying and uh, that uh, some action will be taken on this, uh, such as um, uh, food, food standard authorities around the world need to know about this problem because it's highly correctable. It's extremely hard to stop people eating butter and cream and cheese and chocolate, but it's, not, it's technically quite simple to put some vitamin E back into the vegetable oil uh, in the oil refining process. It is removed, some of it. It can be, can be replaced and it will completely stop the problem in my opinion. Uh, in the meantime we've got the, the change to olive oil, the inositol supplement, the powder, 5 to 10 grams a day which can be purchased to health shops uh, or if you can't get that, lots of corn and oats and nuts and beans, chickpeas, lentils, rock melon, that's cantaloupe, <coughs> and citrus fruits, grapefruit, orange and mandarin, rather rich in inositol and I would predict a good outcome there uh, uh, on a population level and uh, that's uh, probably all we, need to know, all we need to know about this disease. Uh, there is uh, some recent confirmation of my theory from three very good studies on nutrition in among the elderly in Europe. One in Holland and one in Greece showed that the, uh, these uh, seed oils, common seed oils, are associated with cognitive decline. And in France, there's a rather good study called the Three City Study from two or three years back, which showed that the highest intake of the common omega-6 seed oils, which is like peanut oil, safflower oil, canola oil, sunflower oil, these were associated with, a, over a period of four years in older people, double the risk of getting Alzheimer's compared to the lowest intake of such oils in the diet. That's quite a big, big risk in within developing within, within only four years in what we call a prospective study. Uh, so if you were to smoke heavily, it takes many, many years to see 40 times the risk of lung cancer and also double the risk of heart attack. So doubling of the risk in only four years with the highest level of vegetable oil intake in France is perhaps the strongest proof so far that there's a major issue with these oils and we've, we've got to get the vitamin E corrected and then the oils will be safe and we want people to have plenty of them to fight the chocolate and the butter and the cream and the cheese and the chocolate to balance the polyunsaturated fatty acids with saturated fats to stop diabetes and arthritis and Parkinson's and cancer. So we want these oils in the diet, I'm not against them, they're a good source of essential fatty acids but they must be rendered safe and that's the end of my story.